Hey guys, Jason here, Sam Cole Workshop. Today we're going to talk about setting up your winch, proper winch techniques, and a few things like that. Doing a single line, double line, some tips for you, ways to make it where it's going to be safer and keep you from getting into trouble. So we're going to go ahead and set this up. Basically, this is my cradle mounted. Uh, this is my X-Bowl. Uh, our x -Bull XRS, this is the uh, 13.5 thousand pound, 13 and a half thousand pound synthetic line winch in a cradle. This cradle is also sold by um, x -Bull as well too and Harbor Freight and others make it. But it just slides right into my hitch, put your pin in, you're good to go. I've shown you, I'll link a video at the end on how to set all this stuff up right here so that it's a portable winch that can be used on any vehicle. But we're today going to show you some techniques on how to use it the right way. Thanks for watching. Hold on. All right, so this is my winch bag. Winch is right here. This is the cradle. This is that setup. I have the cables here that just wrap right around that when I take it out and put it in the back of my truck or wherever. This bag is my winch bag that comes with me. Shovel, number one mandatory thing. If you don't have a shovel, this is worthless. You have to have this to clear things out and make things easy. So it's very important to have a shovel. Also in here, I have... A tree saver we're gonna go through this stuff and show you how to use it but we have a tree saver which is mandatory and we have a snatch ring on a snatch block on a soft shackle these are the cables that I use to actually be able to hook this up to any vehicle they plug right into this end of this cable right here and they go right to the battery and there's enough cables here to actually reach um, any uh, size vehicle with even a uh, like a super duty with an eight foot bad super crew whatever I need I can reach with these cables so we will show you it's real quick and easy we also have another soft shackle in here as well too and we have our winch remote in here which is magnetic so anywhere I want to put that it'll stay and we have a cord in here too in case we wanted to run power to that let me set this up and we're going to show you some techniques with this guy right now. We got everything hooked up and connected there. Now we have to get this out and get it over to a tree that we have here. Now, first of all, sometimes you will not be able to disengage. If you have this pulled in too, or nice and tight, you may not be able to get it to disengage for you. Mine I can, so I'm okay there. But if you can't, you can always take your remote. Let me power it on so it goes to wireless. I can hit the out button. And that'll give enough slack on there now to let you be able to disengage that, uh, to be able to take that and disengage it so that you can actually run out and free spool your line and be able to take and pull that out as you see we're doing right here. So like I said, sometimes you might have to hit that little tip for you. Now when we take this line out, okay, and we pull this hook over here, we have a simple hook just like this. It's set up. We're going to connect this to a tree step out there, out there for a single line pull. Let me get that set up so I can show you. Okay. So on here we have this set to a tree saver. A tree saver is a strap that's going to not damage that tree. You want to use it like this, where you are both of them connected. You do not want to have this where it's going to be on here and it's going to go through like this and pull tight on that tree. You don't want to do that. You want to have both of these brought together so that that load is equally distributed. Now, sometimes some people say it's okay to run, let me take that off there. Some people say it's okay to run them both on one like this and you can probably do that, but I don't like how the force is applied on this front of this hook versus the back of the hook on there too. Now maybe I'm wrong and some of these tree straps are a lot thicker through here. So if that becomes the case, and again, I am no winching expert, in any by any means okay but um and i'll actually link there's a really good channel you should watch which is uh florida off-road recovery because this guy knows his stuff really well and does some great things but you could also take a soft or hard shackle and put it through here like this to connect these and then that gives you a point that you could then connect to as well and you can connect your hook right onto this as well put that right through there any way you want to and connect your hook on here now notice when I hook, I'm always hooking in the up position, okay? Hook up, that is the direction. You don't want to come down this way because see, then it puts the weight down, but then when you pull, it's gonna pull, it's got a chance of pulling from the bottom part. You want to have this where the weight is on the bottom and it hooks this way so that it pulls from here. And if this were to break, most likely it would break from this section and it would shoot this hook downward rather than shoot the hook upward. So remember that word, hook up. Anytime you are hooking a hook to any kind of anchor point, come up from underneath is how you hook. You don't come in and hook down, all right? Um, you hook up, and again, I'm no expert, but there are some things that you just learn that stick with you. So this would be the proper way you could hook this up if you wanted to also, that saver. 
you want to remember, you know, your system is only as strong as the weakest link. So you want to know the rating for your soft shackles, know the rating for your tree saver, know the rating for your winch and winch line. You want to know all of this stuff that you're paying attention to, but this would technically be it. And then as we tighten that up, that is our connection right there for a single line pull. So if I bring this in a touch, you're set up for a single line recovery on your own. To the winch, straight to your tree or obstacle or another vehicle or whatever you're doing in a hooked up position. Now, we do not have a winch blanket on here and a winch blanket is recommended. However, if you don't have a winch blanket, the other thing you can use is you could use your floor mats, you can use anything like that you want to. I could actually take my winch bag that I have right here and I could put this through this system, which would look like this. So if we take a second and I let this out just a hair. So that we can loosen this, I can take this and connect it on here. Put this on here. Feed my clamp through here. Connect this on here. And I can use that bag in here and fill this full of anything I want to. And this will act sort of as a winch blanket right on that actual line right there too. So, and I also, in my vehicle, I have two towels that I can put on there also, which I would take a towel and I would wrap a towel around that heavy clevis like this. Now I have that protection on there of that right there and I have a winch blanket that would be somewhere along the middle of this and like I said you just throw a couple of things right in that bag but now I am protected if anything were to happen for that winch line flying away and I have that extra weight on there and that is your simple single line pull. Now some things to think about with this single line pull it's very important that you try to get this line between your anchor point and your winch as straight as possible. You can have it offset a little bit. Obviously there's times where trees are going to require you to be offset a little bit, but the straighter in line this is, the better and easier it's gonna be on your winch and the more pull you have. Now also, see how short of a pull we're doing here? We're only at about probably 10, 15 feet. Your winch does not have much power here because your winch weight this 13,500 is with all 85 feet of this line out and only a couple wraps on the spool every row that you wrap on this spool is going to weaken the power of the winch so short pulls like this are going to be very you know they're hard on your actual winch and your equipment because you're not getting the pulling power in some cases that's fine and it's going to work in others you might need more so to get the most power out of your winch let as much line out as you can leaving one full spool wrap of uh you know at least one whole drum full of you know one line or line on your spool that on your drum that way you get the most power out of it but this kind of a pole will not have the power if i were to drive my vehicle out there another 50 60 feet and try and get the advantage out of that so something you need to consider but this is your simple single line pole setup and it's what most people know how to do there is another way too that's going to give you more power be less stressful on your jeep and or on your winch and we're going to show you that next all right, now this next connection, we're going to disconnect this and we're going to talk about is going to be a double line pull. A double line pull is a pretty fantastic feature because of what it's going to do is it's going to actually give you almost double the power of your winch. Or should we say, and it, there's variations on that, but for the most part, it's going to, because it's two lines, it's going to really give you... Um, double the power or half the wear or, or requirement on your actual winch so but the concept is the same but now you can use a snatch block or in our case we're going to use a snatch ring however this is a snatch ring right here however the thing is with a snatch ring um, you cannot if you're going to use a soft shackle which you have to use you cannot have this nylon sheath that you see right here on there it'll cause too much wear so this is a dedicated shackle soft shackle that's on here that does not have that sheath on there so that this will roll smoothly on this type of a setup so what we're basically going to do for this is we're going to remove this towel so we'll put this on the other line we already have a wink with bag with that winch bag on here but so what we are going to do is we're going to take this we're going to loosen this up so that we can put this now through our straps so we feed this right through our tree saver 
put it right on here like this. There we go. We now have that set up on our tree saver and we are good right here with our setup as you can see how this goes. We are going to then take our winch hook and bring it through here so that we are now doubled over on here with the line and then we are going to let out enough line that we can take this back. So the best way to do that is to actually free spool your winch so rather than let the power out you're going to actually twist and free spool it so that you can pull the line and we can get line back out of here just by pulling like this. Then we are going to take this and we are going to connect it to the Jeep. So let me spin you. So I'm doing this one, one person. So let me make sure you can see this on here. So we have that free spooled out. We have that line going through our roller. And we are going to bring this back. And again, we are going to hook up is the, the thing we want to do. Remember, we don't want to hook down. We want to hook up. So we're going to pull this back out more. Okay, we're going to bring this over here. Bring it back to a separate anchor point on your Jeep. So I can hook it right on here, just like this is an anchor point. I could have also did the same thing and put it right on this side. Makes no difference. As long as it's anchored on there, we're going to put it over here. Hook up again, remember. But So now we have that hooked on there. We have two lines. One line here, one line here. Half the weight on this anchor point of this Jeep, half the weight, weight on this anchor point of the Jeep, still the same amount of weight on our anchor point on our tree. Now, there are some benefits and rules to this. <clears throat> when we look back over on this side, notice, let me spin that, there you go. Notice as I did that, that my I am no longer on the, the shackle or the, the snatch ring. I am down here on the saw shackle. Cannot be that way. You need to make sure that that stays on that shackle like this, okay? And any time that you're going to do this pull, if any slack happens uh, anywhere in the system, it very well could pop off and end up like this. This winch line will cut that saw shackle in a heartbeat almost instantly. So you need to constantly, when you're using this rather than an actual closed snatch block, you need to be paying attention to this to make sure that you are good and that you are secure. When you set this up and we have it, we're going to put tension on this so that when I bring this line over to tighten my winch line up, we already have that tension on there just to get us started. So I grab my winch, we're going to bring it in. Okay, so now we have that set up on there. We have the block in order right here. As you saw, it spins as we pull. And then we'll show you the setup. So we already have a winch blanket on that one. We want to put a winch blanket on this one. I do not have one. So again, you use caution and use winch blankets. But I'm putting this on here like this on this line. This is our double line setup. Let me come. Okay, so we have, as you can see right here, our snatch ring set up. And the line from this, what we have going on. We have the line coming out of the Jeep, coming through here, to the snatch ring, around the snatch ring, back to the Jeep. Because we have two lines here, we are doubling the pulling power, basically, of that Jeep, but we are also dividing the pressure, the, the uh, load force on the winch by half from this line, half from that line. So let's say that if this was pretty bad, it was going to require 5,000 pounds of pull, we have... 2,500 pounds of pull, 2,500 pounds of pull, 5,000 pounds of pull. See how that works? So we're doubling the power we get. We still have the same amount of energy being used on this anchor point at 5,000 pounds, but because we are running two lines, each line spits that load to 2,500 each. In a nutshell, there are some variations, but we're ballparking here, and that's how you're going to run a dual line setup. All right, now we have this set up. We are set up, the truck is running. I got the truck in neutral. Make sure if you have a four wheel drive that it's not only in neutral in your shifter, but you also put it in neutral in your uh, your transfer case as well too, so you don't break anything in there. But we have the parking brake set. We're gonna back this Jeep up so we pull this line in good and tight. You will notice that this will spin as we do this because of that double line pull. As this winch line pulls it in, it's going to roll around this and you'll see that start spinning. Winch line on both lines is fine. We're going to, like I said, bring this in close. A winch blanket works better than my setup, but I don't have any winch blankets here yet. So that's what I'm kind of showing you here. 
but as I hit this, now the other thing is, if you want to stay away from, uh, we're going to put this on wireless, come on, kick in, but we want to stay away from all of this, we don't want to be right here when you're doing this okay in any case anything breaks so you want to stand well enough far away it's what's the beauty of this x-bowl winch is that i have a wireless remote that reaches 100 feet it's wired if i want to as you saw me using it earlier and it is now wireless and all i do is press for green for wired or wireless red for wired so beautiful winch system but now as we bring that in okay you can see watch that blue dot that blue wheel right there is going to start spinning as this pulls itself in and it's just dragging itself along. Now notice I'm stopping because I don't want this winch blanket to get caught up in there. So it is a slow process where you take your time and you really analyze everything as you're actually doing it. We also want to make sure that our wheels are lined up and we're going to get that good straight line pull so we're getting the most out of this. I'm like that and then now as we hit that, that's going to start creeping again. You'll see that starts rolling. And that is how this fully happens. Okay, that's how this whole process works. Now, you will notice this. This is the reason I did this. You will notice that as you get yourself unstuck, you are going to have a mess on your winch like you're seeing here. Okay, notice how I have all that winch line here that is all bundled up right here. We don't want all that. I want this put on here nice and straight and even like it's supposed to be. So when we have our winch job done like we do right now, we are basically going to let out the winch so that we get that loose, okay? Again, magnetic, I love that. So now we are gonna disconnect our system and then we have got to fix our winch line. We cannot leave it in this kind of a condition. We do not want that set that way. So what we are going to do is we are going to pop off our shackle here, loosen that up so we can take off our soft shackle. Come on, feed through there. There we go. So the soft shackle comes out of here. We leave the tree saver there. Or you can do this at home later if you want to, but I much prefer to just do it right now while I'm here right now in the backyard. But now, so we have that, we can pull off this line here, set that over here out of the way. We can take our hook off of here, pull it off of this bag because we no longer need it. So we're out of there. We're going to come back over to our tree saver. And since we are just going to do this light pull um, and nothing crazy because we're just rewinding it, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect up to that just like that. We take our other soft shackle. We put it here. We are going to put this in free spool, pull out that line that we've got all bundled up on there from doing your recovery. So we get down to nice, smooth, clean wraps like that, okay? Now we have good, clean wraps. So now what we're gonna do is re we're gonna leave that disengaged for a second. We're gonna take this slack up. So I wanna put it here in my mirror where I can see this start to straighten out, but I have that clutch is disengaged so that if I start pulling too hard on this, it's just gonna let some out. We are gonna now move the vehicle forward to take up this slack so that I can rewind this on there nice and tight and properly and not have to deal with uh, things being all mungle jumbled up in there from whatever way we had to do that recovery. So that's what we're gonna do now. Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, now that we have that set up, we are connected to our tree saver, our hook right there, and we are connected to the winch. We want to re-spool this winch cable as a game plan. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna actually use this to take it in, but now we have the vehicle set in neutral in both the transmission and the transfer case in neutral and because i'm by myself and i have a manual parking brake on this jeep i have that parking brake set three quarters of the way just enough to not lock the wheels up but enough to give good tension on it if you have somebody with you have them get in it and apply the brakes while it's in neutral double neutral transfer case and the uh, transmission have them apply the brake while you do this so that you can get some resistance on this strap to take care of it. So that's what we got now. So we got to engage our clutch. Clutch is now engaged on there. We are going to take this and we are going to start feeding it.
Okay, so we got it tight. What our goal is, is to, keep, to get this line to wind on there very nice and smooth like we want so it doesn't bird's nest out by loose, loose loops and tight loops and tight loops going below the loose loops and making it too hard to unravel. So by doing this with the tension on the vehicle, it's going to pull this in and it's going to feed that on there good and tight like we want. Now we're gonna stop there too. Now keep in mind, again, the reason I can be in here right now is because there's very little load on this. It's only a few hundred pounds probably to actually pull this because it's just barely, it's in neutral with a parking brake on slightly. So there's not much weight going on on here. But the reason we need to be here is we want to guide that and make sure our spool loops that come across this are perfect. It's not automatic, okay? It doesn't have a set of fingers like a paw here that's gonna move back and forth with your rolls. There's nothing like that on there. The only way to get this thing to spool up like we want it to is to do this by hand and make sure that those wraps are perfect. So that's why I said you do this after your recovery is done or when you come home in a situation like this where I'm in a controlled environment and I can pull this line out. I can wash any of the line. If it's covered in mud, take a five gallon bucket, pull all my line out, wash it in a five gallon bucket and then re-spool it like we're doing right here. You will need some space because you got about 85 feet of spool of, uh, of line on here. So you need a little bit of space to do it. But this is basically how I wrap that on there. And this is what our process is. And when you're winching, another piece of tip for you, when you're winching, winch for maybe 20, 15, 20 seconds and then stop for 15, 20 seconds. Or winch for 30 seconds, stop for a minute. Depending on how heavy your load is. This is a light load. I could keep going for a minute and a half even but you do not want to overheat that winch. you got to give that motor time to cool down. You have no idea the amount of power that is in that and how those gears work. So it's very important that you give it that time for it to calm down and cool down. All right, now that we're here at this point, that's it. The rest we're gonna do by hand. So what we're gonna do now with that parking brake set, we're gonna let this out a little, okay, so that we can unhook it. Set that there, I love the wireless connect, or uh, the magnetic mount on that. We are gonna disconnect it from our tree saver. Now we are gonna put this in manually. So we're gonna hold this as tight as we can, pulling on it, and we're gonna bring the rest in. Now we got to be careful here. I do not want to get my hands pinched in this. This doesn't care about your fingers. It will take them right off. So we have to be very careful on this. The beauty of the X-Bowl setup here that we have, this X-Bowl winch, it has magnets in there. All I have to do is that right there and it'll take it in on its own. Okay, I don't have to mess with it. We got to put our strap back on here. That's what this winch strap is for, is to keep your hands from getting hurt. So we can hold it here let out a little bit more here for our line. Hold on. I want to keep my wraps good on here. Okay, so we got it here. So we're going to take this. We're going to bring it in a touch more. Okay, so it's there. Now I can take this and just magnetically stick it right there. And it is set. Now I can just bring in that last little slack watching it here. There it is. That's in. Can't come out. Good and tight. Everything is set there. We are officially done. Take your wire out of your remote, close your port, there it is, and then all we got to do now is clean up our stuff. But that right there is your simple self-recovery with a winch. When you're recovering other people, there's some different things you can do with another snatch ring, things like that. But for basic purposes, this is what you want to do. The takeaways. Make sure that you understand what part of your system is the weakest link. Okay. Know the weight ratings on your tree savers, know the weight ratings on your soft shackles, know the weight rating on your winch line, know the rate, rate, rate weighting on your recovery points. Know all of that stuff ahead of time so you know 
where you're going to get into trouble. Understand the conditions of what they do and uh, how things work as far as your mirror, okay? Mire, it's called mire. Um, is what it is but basically what we're talking about is how badly sunk your vehicle is if you are stuck in so in sand or mud we'll use mud okay because most people are in mud but if you're in mud up to your rims okay up to your axles you're basically one time the weight of your vehicle to remove it if you are sunk up to the hubs of that and you are in that where you are high centered in there pretty good you are one and a half times so if you're sitting on the frame you're one and a half times the weight of your vehicle to remove it. If you are up past that, if you are high centered and you're covered up into your, you know, way up your wheels and up into the, the cab and you're really in the mud, that is two times and could even be two and a half times the weight rating of your actual vehicle. So if this is a 5,000 pound Jeep, light stuck in the mud, 5,000 pounds of power needed to pull it out. Make sure your gear can handle that. If you're stuck and you're sunk into the mud, like I said, just below your axles in there, you could be 7,500 pounds. If you're sitting on your frame and framed out and buried the axles and the diff and everything is buried, could be 10,000 pounds to have to get this out. Notice that on a 10,000 pounds, you're probably going to have to be doing a double line self-recovery because you can't get enough power to do it. And then if you're really bad in, you're going to need, you might even need, you know, you might even need 13 and a half, 13, 13, 5, 14,000 pounds of pressure to get this thing out. That is the beauty of this. This right here will reduce tremendously. This shovel will reduce that load. Okay, if this requires, let's say it requires 10,000 pounds to get out because of how it's buried in. By taking this in the back of all four wheels, because we're pulling from the back and removing that hard wall of mud and shoveling all that stuff out of there and giving it a smooth uh, slope to get out of, removing the mud as much as you can from parts by the frame and where it's hung up at, if you can free a lot of that, you could take this from a 10,000 pole down to a 5,000 pole and make it a lot easier for everybody. So these are some of the winching basics for you. Again. I am not an expert. I have only done maybe a dozen winch recoveries in my life on my other Jeeps. So I am not by any means an expert. But I definitely do feel that this information is very important for you to understand to keep you safe and to do it right. So hopefully that's what you gain from this video. Thanks for watching.